Battling rock star brothers, legendary Hollywood sisters whose simmering feuds spanned decades, a pair of princes, and even a beloved movie star who opposed her Oscar-nominated brother in his nasty custody dispute all make up these memorable celebrity kinfolk feuds. Let's dive right in to star sibling savagery. It's no secret that Alec Baldwin leans to the left on the political spectrum. In fact, he won an Emmy for his hilarious impression of Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live, which was by no means complimentary to the president. However, the former 30 Rock star's politics are in opposition to those of brother Stephen Baldwin, a fundamentalist, born-again Christian, and enthusiastic Trump supporter. This has caused a rift. In 2017, Stephen told The Hollywood Reporter, I haven't spoken to Alex since the election. That's the truth. That is by his choice. In fact, Stephen made a somewhat dubious prediction that the Republican tax cuts introduced in late 2017 would bring his brother over to his side. He declared, I'm calling it now. With the amount of money Alec is going to make with this new tax cut, I bet he votes for Trump for re-election. Just saying. Meanwhile, another of the four Baldwin brothers slammed Stephen for his political views. Billy Baldwin tweeted at Stephen, saying, If our father were alive today, he'd smack you in the side of the head for supporting Donald Trump. As fans of Bravo's The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills can attest, the relationship between sisters Kim and Kyle Richards has seen more ups and downs than a seesaw at a preschool playground. Part of this has to do with Kim's longtime struggle with alcohol, which Real Housewives viewers first saw when Kyle confronted her in the back of a limo in an infamous 2011 scene. Kim, do you I'm act like an insane person, okay? I'm so sick of your crap. Everybody is. Everybody's sick of what you put us through. Kim was still having issues in 2015, when she was arrested and cited for public intoxication, trespassing, resisting an officer, and battery on a police officer. In 2019, Hollywood Life reported that Kyle reached out in an attempt to end their estrangement. Sometimes I feel safer just keeping at arm's length. According to Us Weekly, this was after a downward spiral that led to Kim visiting the UCLA emergency room. That conversation didn't go well. Apparently, the talk turned into a heated argument. One source said Kim felt Kyle's words came out harsh and that Kyle was overstepping her boundaries and was out of line. Kyle was trying to help and let Kim know that she's here for her. When Oasis burst on the music scene in the early 1990s, the British rockers charted a string of hits like Wonderwall, Don't Look Back in Anger, and Champagne Supernova. The band's rise was as meteoric as its demise was messy, brought about by the ongoing animosity between founders Liam and Noel Gallagher. While both brothers were responsible for the band's success thanks to their individual creative contributions, their dysfunctional relationship far transcended mere sibling rivalry. Rolling Stone charted a timeline of the brothers' ongoing battles, with highlights including Noel walking off stage in the middle of a show and quitting the band's debut North American tour, though he came back on soon after. The legendary wibbling rivalry bootleg recording of an interview in which the brothers trash each other mercilessly, Noel quitting again in 2000 and then for good in 2009. Since then, both Gallagher's have publicly slagged each other. Liam pretty much summed up his feelings about his brother, which are no doubt mutual, when he told LA Weekly, I'd rather eat my own than be in a band with him again. He's a miserable little f if you know what I mean. When it comes to rock star sibling rivalry, the undisputed all-time champions have to be Ray and Dave Davies of the Kinks, who have been riffing and roughhousing since the 1960s, and certainly didn't keep it to themselves. The band members' onstage brawls ultimately led to a four-year ban in America. Dave Davies told New Musical Express about Ray back in 1966, "...about a year ago, we hated the sight of each other. We would fly into a temper at the slightest provocation. I suppose, in a way, it was only natural when we spent so much time Time together. In another quote cited by Ultimate Classic Rock, Ray acknowledged that he was not blameless. He said, Dave has his problems with me sometimes, but that's inevitable. I'm not an easy person to work with. By 2014, Dave was singing a different tune, telling The Independent his love has always been relentlessly directed towards Ray. The following year, however, that sentiment wasn't quite so apparent. Dave told the Daily Mail of a childhood incident that was symbolic of the brothers' whole relationship. During an impromptu boxing match, match, Dave knocked Ray into a piano, leaving him, quote, seemingly unconscious. When Dave leaned in to check on him, Ray bolted upright and punched Dave hard in the face. Dave recalled to the tab, I felt the pleasure that I'd knocked him over, then concerned that I'd hurt him. But all he really wanted was to get back at me. 
Before Pretty Woman made Julia Roberts America's sweetheart, it was her older brother, Eric Roberts, who was the movie star in the family. In the 1980s, he was on the rise in Hollywood thanks to acclaimed performances in Star 80, The Pope of Greenwich Village, and Runaway Train, for which he earned a sole Oscar nomination. When his little sister's stardom ultimately eclipsed his, Eric was neck deep in a cocaine addiction, a path that ultimately led him to TV's celebrity rehab. When he and girlfriend Kelly Cunningham split in 1993, Julia reportedly helped fund Kelly's legal costs in the custody battle over the ex-couple's daughter, who would go on to be American Horror Story's future star, Emma Roberts. Eric and Julia spent years estranged from each other, but they reunited in 2004, shortly after the birth of Julia's twins. He gushed to people at the time, saying, I don't think she's ever been happier in my presence. Fourteen years later, Eric looked back at their estrangement, which eventually broke when they became, quote, email buddies, according to Vanity Fair. He admitted to the outlet that his drug use was a major factor, saying, I wouldn't characterize it as a falling out. I was exhausting to be around, complainy, blamey, unable to enjoy enjoyment. Everyone in my world needed a break sometimes, and that must have included Julia. When Christopher Ciccone wrote a tell-all book about sister Madonna Louise Ciccone, also known as Madonna, it created a rift that lasted for the better part of a decade. Madonna reportedly felt betrayed by the book, which provided a detailed account of her wedding to Guy Ritchie, an event she went to great lengths to keep private. In an excerpt published by the Daily Mail, he writes of her, quote, bullying behavior. It includes a scorched earth fax he sent her where he complained that he had to listen to her, quote, egotistical rantings and mediocre talent. Talent. He even went further to say that she had a lack of taste that would, quote, stun the ages. Speaking to CBS News, Christopher said, Some may consider it betrayal of some kind. I consider it my memoirs. I can't tell my story without telling hers. Our lives are completely intertwined. In 2017, Christopher told The Sun that he and his sister were starting to bridge the divide. He shared, We've gotten past that. We talk. But I do know Madonna likes to hold grudges. Fortunately, in 2019, the hatchet was officially buried. Christopher told R Online, We are at peace now and just spoke last week. Madonna has been great. Nick Carter is best known as a member of 1990s boy band Backstreet Boys, while younger brother Aaron Carter had a successful pop career of his own. Since then, both have experienced various issues. Nick has been candid about his struggles with addiction, while Aaron also battled substance abuse, and in 2019 revealed he'd been diagnosed with various mental disorders, including schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder. Discord between Aaron and Nick can be traced back years, which Aaron recalled in 2019 by tweeting footage of an ugly interaction from their MTV reality show, House of Carters, alongside the claim that Nick, quote, bullied and tortured him his whole life. The exact same day as Aaron's tweet, Nick went public by tweeting that he and their sister Angel were seeking a restraining order against Aaron. As he explained, Aaron's increasingly alarming behavior and his recent confession that he harbors thoughts and intentions of killing my unborn child left us no choice but to take every measure possible to protect ourselves. Aaron responded with another tweet, claiming he and Nick hadn't seen each other in four years. In a follow-up, he coldly declared, Take care. Nick Carter, we're done for life. Two-time Oscar winner Olivia de Havilland, who died in July 2020 at age 104, was as famous for her movies as she was for her contentious relationship with her sister, fellow movie star Joan Fontaine. According to biography, the sisters' animosity sparked in childhood and continued throughout their lives. Speaking with people about her 1978 memoir, No Bed of Roses, Fontaine said, I regret that I remember not one act of kindness from Olivia all through my childhood. You can divorce your sister as well as your husband. I don't see her at all, and I don't intend to." A few years after Fontaine's 2013 death, de Havilland told the Associated Press that she bore no responsibility for the bad blood with her sister, despite the fact that she confessed to having taken to calling Fontaine, quote, Dragon Lady. She said, "...on my part, it was always loving, but sometimes estranged, and in the later years, severed." Then she made her point even clearer when she went on to explain her understanding of a feud. She shared, "...a feud implies continuing hostile conduct between two parties. I cannot think of a single instance wherein I initiated hostile behavior, but I can think of many occasions where my reaction to deliberately inconsiderate behavior was defensive. 
Prince William and younger brother Prince Harry seemingly had a close relationship for their entire lives. Yet royal watchers began to see cracks form after Harry's wedding to Meghan Markle. In late 2018, the Daily Mail reported that a source told royal reporter Katie Nichol, Harry felt William wasn't rolling out the red carpet for Meghan and told him so, resulting in a bit of a fallout. Apparently, this issue required Prince Charles to step in. Harry was also reportedly insulted by William's alleged suggestion that his romance with Markle was moving a bit quickly. The book Battle of Brothers, William and Harry, the inside story of a family in tumult reveals more, claiming that when Harry pushed back, William asked their uncle, Charles Spencer, to express similar concerns, which made matters even more dramatic. Even still, Harry wasn't upset with his uncle, claimed the book, but with William for, quote, dragging Spencer into it. Harry added that anger and mistrust, that distance, has lasted to the present day. While that's a lot of speculation from anonymous sourcing, consider this actual quote from Harry, who told ITV in October 2019, we're certainly on different paths at the moment. As brothers, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. I will always be there for him, and as I know, he will always be there for me. I love him dearly. The Jackson 5 gave us enduring hits, including ABC, I Want You Back, and I'll Be There. But from the family band, only one superstar emerged, the king of pop, Michael Jackson. The way Michael skyrocketed to fame above his siblings reportedly left older brother, Jermaine Jackson, consumed with jealousy. Close family friend Stacey Brown revealed in a New York Post article that not only was Jermaine fixated on Michael's fame, he would profess that he should have been the one moonwalking on stage in Michael's shoes. Jermaine reportedly complained, We had plans, but once Michael beat me to it, he made sure it would only be him. Over the years, Jermaine denied any feuding with Michael and even frequently defended his embattled brother. In 1991, however, Jermaine fired a clear shot with his single Word to the Bad, which he admitted was a dig at his brother's changing appearance. Author of Celebrity Tantrums, The Official Dirt, Lisa Brandt, reported that Jermaine's ex-wife confessed that the track was his jealous response to producers who abandoned in his recording to work with Michael instead. Mega producer L.A. Reid confirmed in his own memoir, Sing To Me, that the track did indeed cause a huge blowout between the brothers. According to Showbiz 411, after Michael agreed to let Jermaine release the track, it seemingly vanished. As Reid shared, two days later, the record disappeared off the air. I don't know if Michael did anything, but it went away in a flash. Meghan Markle's half-sister, Samantha Grant, has refused to stay silent on the matters concerning Markle's relationship with her estranged father, Thomas Markle. According to Biography, she has had a complicated relationship with her father ever since her royal wedding. Their relationship appeared to worsen after reports claimed Meghan sent her father a private letter, which he later shared with the Daily Mail. Reportedly, she asked him to stop reading the tabloids and stop listening to his, quote, other daughter and her vicious lies. In 2019, Samantha criticized her royal sister in the documentary Meghan and the Markles, A Family at War, which focuses on Meghan's estrangement from Thomas, who has since apologized for their ongoing feud. In the doc, Samantha claims, Meghan doesn't have a heart. She can't turn herself into the victim here. She also shared that she believed Meghan's letter was strategic planning to frame Samantha and Thomas as liars. Samantha also claimed in the doc that her beef with Meghan started when Prince Harry referred to his family as the family that Meghan has, quote, never had. Samantha took this description as incredibly offensive, as she shared, Though we weren't the classic family together on schedule for every holiday, we were family. Despite Meghan and the royals refusing to comment on Grant's accusations, they have been criticized as being motivated by, quote, resentment and jealousy. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.